Hi, hi, hello everyone, it's Akari, executive overthinker. Speaking of which, have you ever had that one idea that just won't leave your brain no matter what? I have loads of them, admittedly some more ridiculous than others. One of those was drawing Sonic characters as human. I've had this idea for a while, but I've never actually committed to it, you know, with the whole I have other stuff to do thing. And it's not like it's the most original thing to draw either. Because back in the 2010s, there were so many people that drew these. If you were not there to witness it, honestly, you'd be surprised. But the idea has never left my brain. So some days ago, I just said, screw it, and chose a randomizer to choose a character for me to doodle. And it chose Belle from the IDW comics. So I decided to make that my warm-up doodle of the day. I posted it on my Instagram stories and called it a day. Until some hours later, my friend suggested I draw the ODW girlies as a human for a video. And that was way too good of an opportunity to pass up. So here we are. Today, lovely viewer, I'll be quote unquote designing human Tangle, Whisper, Lanolin and Surge. And why do I say quote unquote? It's because I very soon realized this challenge was harder than expected on another angle I hadn't considered. You see, the clothing on the IDW characters doesn't look a lot like the game characters because on how detailed it is. That's because they were designed on a comic style rather than the game style. You know, with the limited polygons and stuff. And I think that's very interesting. The only problem for this challenge was that the clothing was very much set, so I had to get a bit more creative with the silhouette and posing to get this to really shine. To start off, I made some sketches and color holds, which if you're designing any character, I really encourage you to do this. I really wanted to get their height and color palette figured out. I kept most of the colors unaltered though, just tweaked a few shades to fit more of the vibe I was going for. And the silhouette, I went more into the character's personality to guide me through it. Like Tangle, she's carefree, and so I decided to give her a slimmer build. I'll go over them a bit more in detail as I make the final illustrations. But before that, here's a segue! It is that time of the video in which I'm annoying and tell you, lovely viewer, to subscribe. It really helps out this channel, and you get even more wacky videos like this one right here. So just tap that like and sub button below the video. Lastly, here's a friendly reminder that if you'd like to see behind the scenes, early videos and extra content, you can now join memberships on this channel. I'd appreciate if you like it to join and support the channel and my art. So thank you for the sub and or the membership. Anyways, let's go back to drawing human sonics. First one I wanted to refine was Surge, you know, because she's very cool. And I gotta say, I had a lot of fun rendering her hair. Which, speaking on that front, I was really having a hard time styling the way I wanted it. Because, okay, it is easy to just pin it up on a very high ponytail that just defies gravity, but I don't know why I decided I wanted to integrate physics into this drawing. Like, bro, I'm straight up not having a good time. I started drawing because I wanted to get away from maths, not add to the problem. <laughs> Add maths. I'll stop myself right there. But yeah, after a bit of head scratching, I had the idea for the final draft. Originally, I intended her to have a forehead marking as just that, but then I realized it would be a wasted potential for a hardcore girly like Serge not to have black highlights on her hair, and so I decided to just go with that idea. And for her clothes, I kept it very similar to the OG design, just a few tweaks here and there, like making her shirt a crop top in this design and changing her gloves to black fingerless gloves, because you know someone is hardcore when they use fingerless gloves, that's like the epitome of cool. I did keep the glove cuff thingy, because it kinda looks like chains. I just added some shading to hopefully make it look like that. Did it work? I don't know, you be the judge. <laughs> Let's move on to Lanolin. And I'm just going to say this up front, this design is the one I had most fun with. I love drawing each and every stage of this and now I have no idea why. <laughs> maybe it was the hair? I like drawing hair a lot so maybe that was it. I don't know man, <laughs> I just had a lot of fun. 
But speaking about the hair, in the beginning I had no idea on what hairstyle to give her. The original lanolin design has like four ponytails, and I think that in the position they were at in the design of in a human design, it would look pretty funky. So I decided to give her two high ponytails and some loose hair at the back. Yes, I know that's a lot of hair, but she's a sheep. What do you want me to do? <laughs> On other notes, I gave her a tan skin tone because I think it contrasts nice with the whitish hair. And I gave her a more muscular build. I mean, it's not even that buff, but I wanted her to look a bit more strong because she's a leader. And I'm sure between her first appearance as a background character and now she's worked out a bit, right? <laughs> I think this design has the strongest silhouette too. If I had to pinpoint why that is, I'd say it's the hair and the puffy pants. And lastly for Lanolin, I wanted to give her a more cheerful expression, since I think she should have a bit more of a cheery characterization, like when she was first shown. Uh, I, well, I like Lanolin's personality, I think she should smile more and sleep, because poor girly, she works way too much. Either way, let's move on to Tangle. <laughs> I was really looking forward to drawing her. I straight up the back had an idea for her. I wanted her to have some sort of mullet. It was perfect in my opinion for her little tuft of hair at the top and a longer portion for her tail to symbolize her tail. I made it much longer in the final illustration than in the sketch and I think that she's rocking the look so much. Like I originally was going to give her short hair and a scarf for her tail, but then I found out that would be too boring for a character so impulsive and energetic like Tango. Because if you're going to tell me that Tango wouldn't be a character to grow out her hair, only to one day impulsively shave a side of her head and then call Whisper crying because she has maybe made a mistake, I wouldn't have believed you. I rest my case, she's just silly like that. For her outfit, again, I kept it pretty much the same as the IDW version, just with a few tweaks, that being the stripes on her suit are more on the front than on her sides, and I made her have shortish sleeves and a high neck on, on, her, on the suit. Oh, and I gave the Sonic Boom treatment and gave her some sport tape on her ankles too. As I was drawing her, I was thinking of this weird IDW human seiyuu I was unintentionally creating and I thought she maybe would have been an athlete. That's why I drew her in a running like pose. And if you're wondering, Lanolin would be a leader of a military group and search a part-time rockstar and part-time delinquent that is probably on Lanolin's blacklist. Anyways, let's move on to the last one for today, Whisper. And since my classic Sonic video, which if you haven't seen, it's on the top right corner or in the description, go check it out after this one, wink wonk, I received the message loud and clear. I want to formally apologize for only drawing Tangle and not Whisper on that video. I get it. They are a two for one deal, do not separate. So to amend my sins, I just had to draw her in this one. I know, hearts will still be broken until I draw Whisper as a classic Sonic character on another video, but until then, I hope this will suffice for a bit, Tangle and Whisper fans. But let's talk design now. I had the hardest time with her because of how well the design is made. No joke, I was struggling to try to add something. Her design is just very well done. At first I thought of making my own Whisper design, but that wouldn't be a redesign or an OC. So nah, not doing that. So I did what I always do, I took a tactical retreat for the day, aka I procrastinated playing Pokemon. It just had been a long day of drawing and my two brain cells were tired. Next day, feeling fresh as lettuce, or well, the most you can feel fresh as lettuce while staring at a computer all day drawing, I settled on a few things. I gave her some gold accents but in some places to complement her dark skin and the bluish tints of her outfit, as well as a utility belt. That came to me while sketching the final design and I think it works pretty well. The one thing I wish I had done, I realized while watching the speed paint, 
is I should have included the cyan color of her wristband into the design. And man, I am mad at myself for not noticing it earlier. I, <laughs> I may come back and edit it before posting this, but it's 1 a.m. and I am kind of tired to edit it in right now. Thank you very much. <laughs> But with that guys, gals and non-binary pals, I have drawn four Sonic IDW Gajinkas. Do tell me which one is your favorite in the comments, and if you like, comment who'd you like me to take a crack at. I am totally down for making a part two. But with that said, here goes a huge thank you to the first channel member! Shout out to Kami M! Thank you, thank you, thank you so much for supporting me and the channel! And thank you, lovely viewer, for watching, subscribing, or joining Team Akari! And as always, I have been Akari-san! Keep drawing and stay rad! See you on the next one! Bye-bye!